back to a comfortable place. I was a member of the Gig Harbor Midday Rotary for many years, and um, I was because I, I was the director of the Gig Harbor History Museum for eight years. And so I was a member of Rotary, and I haven't picked up Rotary since I moved to Tacoma because my life is kind of busy right now. And uh, but I'm hoping to, to rejoin Rotary. I, is that once Rotarian, always Rotarian? Or <laughs> I'm still a Rotarian, I guess. I'm just not active, but. Um, I, I live over in Gig Harbor uh, with my husband and my two kids who are six and three years old and both of them in school, which is crazy. Um, as I said, I was at the Gig Harbor History Museum for eight years and helped to build a new waterfront facility there in Gig Harbor. And if you haven't visited that, I encourage you to go there. Prior to that, I worked for the Paul Allen um, Foundations in Seattle and uh, was on the grant making side of business. So um, have had um, a fun career to date and then had the wonderful opportunity to step in when Dave McKendry retired after 25 years at the Washington State Historical Society. Um, and I've been in that position for about 11 months now, so almost a year, and finally feel like I have my, my feet under me. And I appreciate the uh, opportunity to talk to you today um, I will talk about what we have going on at the State History Museum, but I might talk a little bit more about the other things that the State Historical Society does. I think folks in Tacoma think of us as the State History Museum, and obviously that's a huge part of what we do, but we are a statewide agency. Um, we are, um, and that may even be news to you, we are a state agency, um, and we run that History Museum, but we have programs statewide, and I want to tell you a little bit about those. That works. <clears throat> Essentially, the mission of the State Historical Society is to sort of take the stories of the past to, um, to connect people to who we are, where we come from, and where we're going. Is there a problem? Um, and to help um, make the Historical Society indispensable to the people of Washington State um, so that they understand their history and the importance of that history in their lives. My vision for the institution is to make sure that we are a welcoming and accessible community center. I believe very strongly that museums are uh, sort of public gathering spaces. And so you may find over the next several months or years that I'm there, uh, if I'm lucky, um, activities happening at the State History Museum that maybe you wouldn't have seen before. An example of that is the uh, haunted house that we're doing this year. So we've got Haunted Museum coming up October 24th through 27th. That's actually a fundraiser for the History Museum, but it's also, also an opportunity to get folks into the museum who might not otherwise have visited. Um, it's a rough history of horror, what has scared us across time. It's for folks 13 and up and not for the faint of heart. It is a real haunted house um, taking place on three floors of the History Museum. That's just sort of an example of maybe stepping outside of the traditional boundaries to make sure that folks see us as really uh, a central part of their community. We want to find ways to connect with folks of all ages. Haunted House is a good example of that. So really from K through uh, retirement to make sure that folks can connect to history. Um, also to give visitors the tools that they need to become lovers of history. And so one of the things that we're looking at at the Historical Society is how we can not just tell stories, but really introduce a process of historical inquiry so that when you visit the museum, um, you are being given the tools that you need to explore history further, to really think about different concepts in history and apply them to your own lives, as opposed to simply reading about someone on a wall. So hopefully that's something that you'll see as you visit in the future. Obviously we want to meet the needs of the educational system and then serve people statewide through our various programs. We do have three facilities, the State History Museum that you're probably familiar with. We also have the State Capitol Museum in Olympia, which is a small um, historic mansion. And uh, the Research Center, which is the old Stadium Way facility. How many folks are familiar with the, the old museum? Yeah, so uh, now that holds all of our collections, five, five floors of um, archives and, and collections. I know a lot of people have really fond memories of that location. Um, uh, uh, when folks come to the to the new museum, which of course has been there for many years, they're often looking for the things that they saw there. The two most common requests are the mummy 
and um, and the boy eating cougar. Anybody remember the boy eating cougar, uh, which is a stuffed cougar that um, sort of apocryphally, I guess, um, uh, was supposed to have eaten a small boy because they found his buttons in the stomach of the cougar. And my curator tells me that that's completely bunk and that that's not the cougar that ate the boy, but um, a lot of people ask about the boy eating cougar, so. Um, we offer a variety of programs. We, uh, we focus obviously on putting up um, educational exhibits, um, educational programs. We serve about 16,000 school kids on site. Uh, every year, and that's not to mention kids who uh, are served through our outreach programs. We also um, have a strong focus on collection stewardship. So when you uh, give an item um, from your family's history or your company's history to a museum, we're caring for those items. We care for them in an environmentally controlled facility so that they uh, don't deteriorate. Um, we catalog them. We um, provide those catalog um, records online so that you can research online. And then we offer a variety of public programs that you are probably familiar with, like Train Festival, In the Spirit, which we just had, the Native American Arts Festival, and then a number of um, sort of free days like Martin Luther King Day, Veterans Day, and then there are Thursdays that we participate with our fellow museums. And um, we also publish a quarterly magazine, Columbia Magazine, that you get as uh, through membership or that you can subscribe to. And I actually love this publication. If you're a lover of history and you don't get it, I would encourage you to subscribe. It's it's sort of made for the, the, the layman historian. It's not a scholarly journal, but um, the scholarship in it is, is sound, and I think it's a, a fun publication. So the current exhibit that we have, Hope with Hard Times, is focused on Washington during the Great Depression and how we came through, worked together as a community to make it through those times. Obvious parallels to what our communities have faced over the last several years. And then a companion exhibit, Hope in Our Times, which is photography um, from the Key Peninsula um, Middle School with images that those kids felt represented hope in their times. Coming up soon, um, once again, some things maybe you wouldn't have seen before at the History Museum. The first is Let's Ride, which will be motorcycling the Northwest. So we'll have, I think, over 26 motorcycles on display uh, across the history of motorcycles. But the emphasis of that exhibit is really about motorcycling and the experience of motorcycling and, and sort of why folks do it and how it sort of ties into the history of our area, obviously. We have a beautiful natural environment and, and folks love to get out and ride. So you'll, you'll learn more about that in that exhibit. Um, CLIP starts at the end of September. That's a looking at um, sort of classic images of Washington <coughs> State. And then you may have heard on the news, next August is Cooper, which is looking at the D.B. Cooper hijacking, um, which I think will be a really interesting exhibit. Um, Obviously, we want to be careful not to glorify a criminal, uh, but it is a it is a topic that seems to have, really capture the popular imagination um, because it is the only unsolved hijacking uh, to date. The emphasis of the exhibit, though, is not only on the story of D.B. Cooper, but how that hijacking changed aviation and air travel. Um, you may not know that airplanes were actually made differently following the D.B. Cooper hijacking. They changed the, the, the back stair that he jumped off of. They made it so that it could no longer be lowered mid-flight. And there were other modifications that happened as a result of that hijacking. And then obviously, that's sort of the beginning of the change in our experience when we went to the airport. Um, that uh, you, you saw changes happening then, and then of course, all the way leading up to 9-11 to and, and a post-9-11 world. Um, going to the airport used to be a really fun thing when I was a kid, and I don't think it really is anymore. And we're gonna explore some of those themes in that exhibit. And then obviously we have the whole Washington history, which is, which is always there. So the educational programs that we have, as I mentioned, we do our, our field trips and history lab. We've got history boxes that go in schools around the state, which is sort of a, a little history lesson um, with uh, artifacts and items that they can touch and explore. We also provide um, curriculum online. Some of that curriculum is uh, sort of part of the mandated curriculum, like Treaty Trail for schools, and provide publications like this. This is Columbia Kids, uh, which is a, sort of an interactive online uh, lesson for kids. 
with emphasis on STEM education these days, which is obviously very important, history is really being marginalized in the schools um, to the point that um, actually this past year, the legislature no longer made Washington State history a graduation requirement. Um, that doesn't mean they're not teaching it anymore. Uh, it means that it generally happens in the lower grades, like third grade and then middle school. But what we try to do is recognize how history is being taught in the schools and support teachers. So Columbia Kids can be used in an English classroom, it can be used in a literature classroom, it can be used for reading. Um, it supports a number of different educational objectives, but they also get a little history while they're doing it. Um, so it, 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 we try to sneak it in where we can. Um, and then we also provide professional development for, for educators. Washington History Day, is anybody, has anybody ever judged History Day? No, this is, you should get involved in this. This is a really cool program. This is something that we administer statewide, and it's actually not a day. It happens throughout the year. Kids are given a topic like uh, revolution and reform, and they have to do primary and secondary research in order to, to pr come up with a presentation related to that topic. They can create an exhibit, a 10-minute video, a theatrical presentation, um, and there are a couple of other options. And then they compete on a school level, a regional level, state level, and then national level. Uh, this is a great program because kids have to come up with their own argument. Uh, they come up with their own product. They do that original research. And the folks who run National History Day, the, the national organization, have demonstrated that children who participate in History Day have improved educational outcomes across the board. So as a result of participating in this program in middle school or high school, they do better in every subject. Math, science, reading, you know, history. It doesn't have to be history. It's that, it's once again going back to historical inquiry and really having to examine a topic and come up with an argument and prove it. That, that improves their educational outcomes. Um, we clean up at nationals in National History Day. We had uh, 11 kids make it to finals this year and then four kids who um, medal. You would be amazed if you judged uh, one of these competitions, what you would see. I judged the 10 minute documentary program and I couldn't believe the 12 year olds put together this documentary. It was like something on the, the History Channel. It was absolutely amazing. So I, I encourage you to check it out. As a statewide historical society, we also provide heritage resources for all of the sort of smaller historical societies that you would find throughout the state. So we do things like technical workshops, we sponsor travel and exhibit service, um, host a conference, and then we administer the Heritage Capital Projects Fund. So, for example, Broadway Center here in Tacoma has received Heritage Capital Project Funds. The King Street Station renovation that's happening in Seattle uh, is through that program. Pretty much any time you see a major renovation pro project of a, a, a sort of publicly used facility around the state, it's going to be through that program. It gets about $10 million per biennium, uh, and we administer those projects. And it, it's a very important program because there's so little funds to support things like that. Uh, and as I said, the, the buildings, they're not just being renovated because they're historic structure. They're renovated because they're in public use. They're libraries, they're museums. Um, the King Street Station, which is the Am Amtrak station. Yeah? Is that the school out in Oregon? That is, I believe, in Port Angeles. I think that's the Carnegie Library in Port Angeles, if I remember correctly. Um, but, you know, once again, I, I think a, a great program and something that I'm really proud that we're able to, um, to oversee. And incidentally, when I was in Cake Harbor, we, we benefited from, from several of those grants. And really, the projects that we did, we renovated a schoolhouse, a one-room schoolhouse that's now being used for a pioneer school program, um, and, then, and then a historic vessel as well. And those projects just wouldn't have happened without that fund, and that's, that's state-supported. Um, the, generally, I sort of ran through that very quickly, but um, as I said at the beginning, generally what we're looking at at the State Historical Society is making sure that the, the programs that we're offering, both in Tacoma and statewide, are relevant, um, that they're meeting the needs of current audiences, 
um, heritage organizations can be at risk of sort of losing that relevance in, in, in today's world. And so we're really trying to focus on the ways that we can serve the educational system, um, serve the people in our own community, and, and then serve those organizations statewide that are, are, are trying to promote heritage in their communities. And I think if we're able to do that, we'll be able to, to maintain that relevance and, and continue to be something that's supported um, at a statewide level. I went very quickly there, but Cameron told me that there would be questions. So <laughs> prove him correct.